familiar with the American dream and the American concept of, of reinventing oneself. In a way, Liz Murray is the personification of this. She was brought up in the Bronx in New York City by parents who were loving, but also drug addicts. And although, although she seemed statistically perhaps destined to become someone much like her parents, and she was homeless when she was 15, by the time she was 20 years old, she had become a student at America's very prestigious university, Harvard. She has spent the last 10 years traveling to over a dozen countries, inspiring thousands of other people, and is one of the most highly sought after inspirational speakers in the world. The same gutsy strength and determination that pulled her from the streets now empowers her to alter the lives of others, from student groups to business audiences, to people from all walks of life, who are seeking strategies to overcome their own obstacles. She is the founder and director of Manifest Living, a New York-based company whose mission it is to empower adults to create something extraordinary out of their lives. Her inspirational story was captured on Lifetime's television original film, Homeless to Harvard, The Liz Murray Story, which was nominated for three Emmys. Today you get something a little less audiovisual, perhaps, but you get the author herself. So Liz, thanks for being here tonight. And we welcome you warmly, and we're really delighted that you made it. Thank you. Did you have a special intention to write it? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've always felt like I had a lot of difficult things happen to me early in life, and I thought that when they were happening, I was so alone. I felt so alone through a lot of these things. And, you know, when I was reading it, I just started thinking, well, maybe other people go through things like this. Maybe not exactly the same situation, but the same emotions. And I'll write this, like, a dialogue between me and them. And maybe other people will read it and they'll feel less alone. You know, and, and that was a big piece of it, wanting to create a conversation. And also because um, I think I've been told by my family and some friends that I'm very stubborn and you know my whole life one thing that made me very passionate was when people say you can't do something you know oh you can't do that that's impossible you can't do something and so all you need to do to tell me I can't do something I'll go try to do it. I'd like to know how writing the book helped you um, get along with your past. Writing the book was immensely emotional because you know, neither one of my parents are alive right now, and so, you know, I miss them. I think about them on Mother's Day. I think about my parents now that I'm having a baby. I, I think about my parents a lot. So having that feeling of reaching for them and not having them in my reach, writing the book became a way to talk to them again. You think about your parents differently. So the writing process was another way to know them, and inside of that, it became a deeper way to love them. You know, and, and to feel like across all this distance, across depth, across years, across time, I felt like I got to sit and be with them again. So it's precious to me in that way. And in many ways, this book feels like a letter, like a love letter between myself and my parents. And to kind of say, you know, I understand and it's okay. So you made it in the end. When you look at your life, would you say it was luck or it was a strength of will? You know, I think that I always hear people do this either or thing. It's like, were you all, is it all that, this classic American thing of it's all hard work, you know, which we all know is not true. Like you have to have help and social programs and things. Um, but I think it's both because I think that you can give somebody all the chances, but if they don't take them, then those chances don't necessarily help change their situation. But if someone is very willful and they're trying to get something done, and then there's no programs to help them, how can they get any help? And that's not gonna work either. So I think you both need to make a decision and a choice to want to make your life better. And then I think you need social programs and help to get there. I think you need both.